the first thing I'm going to start with is word order. You know, because we all just kind of use Google. Um, if you were like me, you use Google all day. So we dump in um, all kinds of searches into Google. And most of us just put in some big, long, complicated, you just dump in your question. And a lot of times, good enough is good enough. But you wouldn't be attending this workshop if you didn't want to learn how to use it better. So just to show you the, the power of using of word order. My first search is black and blue. And if you want to play along, you can do this in your own browser too. You can have a, a window open and, and play with black and blue. And you'll see how many results I got on about uh, 54, 540 million results. Okay. So look at how much the word, how much just changing the word order, blue and black, changes that. You see that? I got. It's not the number that I'm as um, talking about as much as the importance of what you put first. So if you were searching for salary negotiation techniques, for example, uh, salary negotiation techniques, I would think I'd put in negotiation first. Like, because all uh, techniques for negotiation are, would work. The, the important thing is the negotiation, that you understand how to negotiate, no matter what you're negotiating, who's going to do the dishes or whatever. Okay, so we've talked about word order for just a second here. If I don't want, if I want things that are blue but not black, the magic um, operator is minus. So blue but not stuff that's black. That, I don't know if you remember our results from before, but we were into the hundreds of millions and now we're merely in the millions. So I know that doesn't seem like a big difference, but it takes the word black totally out of the search. So if you are um, want recipes for blue crabs without cream. That's how you do it. Oh, sorry. I just blue cream. And I, I should probably put in the word recipe. That would help a little bit. Blue crab recipes without cream. Okay? Does that make sense? And and y'all, I'll do better if you down here in the uh, there's a chat box over on the right hand side. And so, some of you have been using it, but if you just give me a shout out of yes, or if you're trying a search right now and flipping a risk of flipping word order or using the minus sign, and the minus sign has to be exactly adjacent to the word. Okay? So it, it helps me if you're following along over there. And I'm going to do. Um, Something that, say you went to the doctor and you were um, uh, diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, and I am so sorry to hear that. So as you can see, there's a lot of stuff on rheumatoid arthritis. So what are the things right here in the cert, right here that we can use to limit our results? One is um, search tools that I want results from, I would actually prefer the past year. I don't want things that are in the 70s or on rheumatoid arthritis. You can see once you start using these narrowing features, it's going to um, take away the amount of results you have. And from all, all results, another thing that is going to be handy is reading level, depending on if you're a scholar or not. Sometimes I'll get stuff that I can't understand. 
But also, if you want, if you were, you know, God forbid, diagnosed with can cancer and wanted to talk to about it with your child, you could put your reading level, um, that it's arranged by reading level so that you can get children to understand certain things. Verbatim means that these words are appearing right next to each other. So I'm going to clear this for just a second. And I'm going to go back to just a regular Google search on rheumatoid arthritis. And say that I was trying to explain this to a child or I wanted to just see pictures. I, I think most of you are familiar with um, Google Images. But under Images, there's more ways to limit. Under the search tools, you know, and that did, I'm not getting these until I go over it. But what are, what kinds of pictures of rheumatoid are, what, how gross do you want to get? So for my tools, I'm, um, you can show sizes depending on how you're going to use them. Usage rights, most of us are in academia. So if you were going to use any of these images, you would definitely want to include in your list of references where you got the image, which would be the URL. But I'm going to say labeled for reuse. So I'm doing a presentation for a class. And if I end up using this one, I would put, you know, I'd go to the website, visit the page, and if I'm going to use this image, that, you know, I know I'm being like a librarian, like include your sources, include what you, um, where you got your information, but that's so important for us to model for our students of where we got our information. So once again, I'm doing, I'm back to my rheumatoid arthritis search, and I was driving into work, I've just been diagnosed, and I heard that there was a study. So how do you, you know, you get to your office, and it was like, I just heard that, but where, where was it? Well, it was in the news, okay? And so, and it was in the news within um, the past 24 hours is when I heard that about the study being reported. So that's how you can get back to, oh, I just heard that thing. And Google sorts by relevance, but you can also sort by date. Like these, you can see this one was posted 10 hours ago, and this one, Google thinks it's more important. So it was posted 22 hours ago. But so if you want to sort by date, it's going to put the one, the 10 hour one, or the one that came back one hour um, up top. Does that kind of make sense? Okay. Um, does anybody have any particular Google searches that they're interested in or particular questions? If you do, please put them in the search box. And um, high duplicates is another fun. Um, Show duplicates or hide them. Sometimes if, you, if you're if you Googling yourself, you might want to see where you've been du duplicated and things. Um, I'm going to go back to just my best friend, just regular Google. I'm just going to talk about this page for just one minute. You're there like, I think I've seen this page before. But I want you to look. And if you have this open on your own computer, you can look. Under settings. If you want to get better, there's all this stuff under advanced search, search settings. Um, if you want to clear your history of what you've been doing for the last hour on your computer, this is where you can do it. Uh, search for help, that's like product forums. Search settings, if you have uh, children in your home, you can turn on the safe search. Or if you just don't prefer to not see uh, sexually explicit stuff, and you can also lock it. Um, and Google by default shows 10 results, and Tulsa Wind Turbine. Okay, we can do that. Um, on new technology along with 
all the other garbage. Okay, let me just copy that into a Word document in case it gets hidden. Oh, my computer just slowed down. Anyway, most um, all this demo, all these uh, studies show most of us after we've done a Google search never go past the first ten, the first page. So if you want to help yourself, look at a little bit more than the first page. Um, and you can also have it open in a new page or not. So that's just what's under just your your preferences. Right now, I'm not signed in. When you are signed in. Like on this browser, I'm signed in. Google knows a lot about me. It knows where I, what I've been and what I've been doing. Under settings here, you can also go directly to advanced search. The things in advanced search, under the advanced search, and I'm going to go back and I'm going to run um, my Telsa search right now. Okay, so we've got a lot of results. So let's get into the advanced search. Uh, terminology right here. There's, if you want to just jump directly to that page, um, it was under the settings from a, just any Google search over here. So, Telsa, and you are looking for technical details on the new technology. So, I would uh, use Telsa as an exact phrase and maybe, oh I know, if I put wind turbine here, Tulsa, we're definitely looking for Tulsa and word wind turbine has to appear like it's like putting it in quotes, it has to appear together. And you're looking for uh, technology so we're going to add that word. I'm even going to spell it right. And we want the results to be the last update within, I'm going to say the past month. Maybe, well, let's see what's happened in the past month. So these are just some of the features here on the advanced search. So here we go. So this was posted a day ago. Okay, so when you're saying with all the other hard get a hit on technical details on the new technology, oh I see, and you're seeing a lot of other garbage. So how to get rid of some of the pretty damn awesome technology type stuff. When I go back to my advanced search, um, it's interesting, my gear disappeared. Oh, here it is back again. So I'm going back into my advanced search. You can put the domain of where you want it to appear in. You're going to get things out of EDUs that are different. Then um, EDUs is not like a golden knock all the all the junk out, but EDUs and GOVs, you know, what has the government, this is going to totally change our results to change it to GOV because it's been published, but that's the United States within the last little bit. You don't have to remember all these details. They're all under the advanced search settings. So some of the other things that are in, in the advanced search settings here just for fun. Um, if you are doing uh, what is 3% of, say you were looking at something like the GDP of a country and um, it was a African country and it has almost no GDP, but there's, you know that their 3% is going towards humanitarian aid. So, oh, didn't have that in there. Uh, boy, that's, I'm not doing this very well at all. Let me go back. Numbers ranging from uh, three percent. Uh, 
Uh, let's try it and see if I'm doing this right at all. No, nope, I'm not. Okay, we're just not gonna ignore me. Um, there's some pretty good uh, tools for doing units of measure and doing calculators, but I think if you just Google calculators, you're gonna be okay. Um, I think I'm kind of messing up there. But um, it, it can, this will use to convert units of measure. Um, okay, the other things on the advanced search page, the update, the site or domain, and the other big tip is for a search like TELSA, if you want it in the title of the page, the text of the page, or who is linking to the page. So that can be um, if NASA is linking to the page on a, a topic like that, you're probably going to get better results. Um, and here, here's reading level. I, I talked about that a little bit on the first page. But this is where it shows only advanced results. So with, um, I think our search was something like Telsa and uh, we wanted word um, wind turbines. And only advanced results and then we do run a search. Um, that's kind of interesting. I did not get much. So I would say that the, um, let's see, did I do all in anchor? Oh, I did it in links to the page. It could be anywhere in the um, page, but the reading level show only advanced research. Let's try it that way. There we go. Okay, that's um, getting a little bit more technical perhaps. See, but it's showing you what's intermediate and what they are considering advanced. Okay? So um, I'm going to go back to Google's homepage for just a second and look at these settings one more time because for the search, we talked about search setting and we talked about some of the things that are under advanced search. And here, if you forget anything else from today, remember this, this little setting thing has everything I'm talking about pretty much. Here's the search help. So if you can't remember stuff, this is where you can learn little tricks. Like if every week you just want to learn a new little thing, like how to set your location, how to filter and refine your result, results, like we did images that you can reuse on Google. And that's actually kind of important. And punctuation and symbols in a search, what works and what doesn't. And here's search features, like voice search. Uh, oh, that's really interesting that um, America America's Got Talent, is that important to Google that they haven't listed it way up here? And here are just some basics about understanding things like search operators. So we all think that we know how to use Google, but we talked about putting things in quotes. Um, I'm going to do one um, new Google page real fast here. And I'm just going to make sure everybody's got this idea but that if you put your term rheumatoid arthritis in quotes, I'll run it rheumatoid arthritis, I'll just run it just like that. You're at eight million, about eight and a half million. You put it in quotes, the words have to appear together. It actually didn't change, I guess that because that those words usually go together quite a bit. But say you wanted um, uh, alternative treatment. I'm going to put alternative treatment. See how it's suggesting alternative treatment plus diet? So it must have the word diet in there. How can you 
fix your rheumatoid arthritis with just diet. Alternative treatment, if I run the search like that, I've knocked my results from much higher numbers down because these, it, the words must appear exactly, alternative treatment must appear right next to each other's. So that's how you get rid of a word. This is how you, this is the shortcut. You can do this on the advanced page, but you can also put the site of just NBC or um, if we were doing a search on, um, rheumatoid arthritis, one more time, and we want the site to just be appstate.edu. Say that's your area of interest. So now we're down to people just at App State who publish or have something up on the web on rheumatoid arthritis. So this is a way to find colleagues or other people working right at App State on that topic. Um, so this is all just Google stuff that's right, these are, this is what Google considers basics. So the link, you know, who's linking to it, what's related, and one of my favorites is the fill in the blank. So if you heard something like an idiom and you're not sure what it means, this, the asterisk does that magic thing of, well, maybe it won't do a copy and paste for me. That would be rather mean. But I'll try it again. So I'm, I'm using Chrome, which like most browsers just puts it right in, you know, that puts it right into Google search. So if you're looking for a phrase and you don't quite remember how it goes or you know somebody's misquoting Shakespeare and you want to get it right, um, which will endear you to everyone to have to be the smartest person in the room, but that is how you... Uh, the asterisk acts as a wild card. So it'll, um, and if you want to try this, if somebody wants to try this in, in, and find a, um, a phrase that's difficult to remember or one that is often misquoted, you can share it with the rest of the people in the room. Um, so that's what an asterisk does, okay? I'm going to go back to my notes here for just a second. Um, okay, so we've talked a little bit about word order. Plus, plus in Google, Google changes all the time. I'm going to go back over here to Google, and I'm going to say um, plus penny and earned. So it has to have the word penny and a penny, so here it has to have the word penny and earned. But a way that Google has changed in the last couple of years is since Google Plus came out, they, it used to be in, in Google that if you put the plus word, it, the, the word always had to appear. Since Google came out with Google Plus, they've kind of changed that, the usage all the time. So. The takeaway is that Google changes all the time. So you could become, you can learn a lot of tricks, but you know, every time before I teach this class, I have to kind of review some of the things. I think, oh, this is so cool. But I've noticed in Google, plus the meaning of using Google, the plus is changing in the algorithms of Google. It used to be in Google, too, that if you knew, like, the word and is Google um, generally ignores words like and, or, but. Uh, however, using it as a search operator, and I'll show you what I mean by a search operator, this, a lot of you might have seen these Venn diagrams, and in, in library databases, it'll work and work so that it excludes mineral and deposit. It has to have both those words. Google doesn't, their algorithm does not work exactly like that. And, or Google already is looking for synonyms for you, but, or 
does not always find synonyms. So if you're looking for an unusual synonym, you can use the word or capitalized. Otherwise, in a Google search, it kind of ignores the word or. And putting, I'll show you what I mean with mineral not mining, then mineral mining. So in a regular Google search, once again, it's easier for people to see if I'm at the Google, oops, <laughs> okay, so why doesn't somebody in the class, um, I'll, I'll just pick on somebody, maybe Kathy Hull, you type in um, mineral, not um, mineral, not mining, and I'll use the mi minus. So I'm getting, this is mineral without the word mining. And I wonder if Kathy's results are the same. I could change, flip the, it's so that we are seeing her screen, but I'm not going to put her on the spot that much. I'll just change it here. We just keep an eye. We got the band mineral up first. If I capitalize not, it makes it like a Boolean operator. See how much that changed the results? It's uh, working like here, mineral not mining. Is that confusing at all to people? I'm typing in the uh, chat box, confusing. And you can tell me if you think that just further made things confusing or not. Um, I'll show you one more example of why I love the asterisks. Um, the cotton gen, who invented the cotton gen? Just put the asterisks at the end, it'll tell you. There we go, Eli Whitney, yay. Um, so it helps, it's like a proximity searcher. That's, it, I called it a wild card before. So we, we went over a lot of, so far, the um, search operators. Um, and I would, once again, oh, a cache version of the site, that can be kind of helpful. Um, it's a, important to understand most punctuation and special characters are ignored in a Google search. Here's what works. Um, the plus sign for searching things like blood type. I tried that earlier. That does work. Social tags like hash or um, the at work. Uh, the ampersand to find strongly connected ideas and the percent sign. Um, I guess I, I was putting that I should have, I was using that in the number range. I should have just put it right directly in the Google search. What is 40% of 80? If I just stick that right in 80, that's going to work. Um, indicate prices, the dollar sign. So these are punctuation symbols that do work. Uh, I've got the minus. Um, so that's words that are strongly connected, a 12-year-old dog. And the underline for, looks for things like, you know the way a word like quick, quick sort or work, work force is one of those words that sometimes people use. See, it's, I put it in underscore work underscore force, and Google is suggesting, is this what you're looking for? Or are you looking for the words separated? So, um, when you put that underscore, it changes your search. Okay? So, there we go. Kathy Hall was following along. Yay! Um, she is an awesome participant. So, let me see what else I want to talk about here. Stuff changes all the time. 
Um, and when you're in Google, um, this is interesting. Let me go back to, oh, I know what it is. I'm up in Safari, and I don't know. You guys can't see my Safari screen, but in history, in, or in my um, browser bar, and you, you can try this right now, go up into your browser bar and do file and um, hmm. I'm looking for incognito, which might be here. Yeah, search settings. There is in, well, I'll just switch to Chrome. Maybe Chrome is the, the term that uses it. Um, as an incognito search. In this one, I am I am logged on. So here's Google, and once again, you cannot. I'm using Chrome, and I want to do a new in, incognito window. And it says I've gone into incognito window, which means it's not going to hold it my search in my history. So if I'm looking for something sketchy, like, or I just don't want my employer to know. Um, thank you, Bob. Bob uh, I'm sorry, Ben is saying that's in Chrome, and he's right. So if I'm looking for library jobs in North Carolina, um, I'm tired of working here, and I don't want my I don't want it to appear in my history. That that's how I could search incognito. The thing about searching incognito, when you read the fine print, it says. We don't protect you from your employer. It, but this isn't even that fine of print, um, and it so it'll it might hide it from your spouse in a quick way, but it's not hiding it from everybody. I'm gonna I'm gonna close my incognito window, and I'll just show you if you are not aware of every browser that you use, it's holding your history. And in Chrome, this um, it, it's holding my history on every device I've used in the last, uh, every device I use where I log on. Not public computers that might not hold it, but like here's my iPad, here's my laptop. So that's just something to be aware about, you know, how much Google knows about you. And um, so, uh, you can clear your history, um, and if anybody wants to discuss that more, we can. Would, I think, let me think, I, I'm past a half hour. I went over a half hour. So um, I just babbled on and on. If you like, I can show a couple Google tips, or um, you guys can go, um, I can let you go. Uh, I'm going to send out the link one more time to the, um, I can't believe I talked that long. <laughs> I hope I said something that was helpful. So um, here is the um, URL for the pages. And I kind of meant to show um, product forums, how Google works. There's a video about working. Uh, there's lesson plans in Google. There's this. Oh, uh, if you want to do a, a big class on becoming a um, power searcher, the link for how to do that is in my slides. And uh, here's some Google Scholar stuff here. So, um, oh, private browser in Safari. Thank you, Ben. So what is the will of the group? Do, does anybody want to say anything about Google Scholar, or have you had quite enough of me? Please show the link again. This is the link to all the slides. And since people have not logged out and appear to still be listening, uh, the only thing I, I won't go on about um, Google Scholar too much. I'm just going to say one thing about Google Scholar. Um, off campus, 
definitely, definitely use it through the library because you are going to get access to all this. Okay, a quick Google rundown would be, oh, you guys are so wonderful. Okay, Google Scholar, people care about it. Great. I'm going to um, get up my notes to talk about it. Let me just pull over here for just a second. So um, Google Scholar is great to find the full text of articles. It's good for citations. Google Scholar is a subset of Google. So it's um, some academic vendors do not let Google crawl it. And for an example, I'm going to use Appalachian Social Health. And I'm, I'm, as I was trying to stress, I want you, when you're off campus in particular, to use Google Scholar through here because it's going to make you, the first thing it'll do is make you authenticate off campus. It'll make you put in your username and banner ID. And then it gives you access to all the stuff that Appalachian, we pay millions of dollars uh, for you to have access to all these articles and databases. So. I'm looking for Appalachian. That, see that asterisk at the end? That'll look for Appalachia, Appalachian, and then issues in so social health. And see this find at App State? When you're off campus, you won't see that unless you go through the library. And you can also configure Google Scholar. I'll just go to Google Scholar. It's Scholar. Under here, under your settings, Library links, if you're off campus, you can also add other libraries. Like say I'm going to Harvard and I know I'm going to be there. I can search and it will see, see Harvard University if you want to include that in libraries that you have access to. So that's, a, um, this is, I'm in Google Scholar and I'm just setting my Google Scholar settings. Um, and you can get in there and play with that. So once again, from the library's homepage, I just ran Appalachian Social Health. Some of the quick things are the range. Advanced is different in Google Scholar than it is in regular Google. The advanced search is here. And you can search for articles returned by, say, there's an author, author, I think there is somebody here on campus named Keith, who publishes in this area. So what's, by, see, I went from a lot of articles, things about social health in Appalachia, just by the author of Keith, and I'm down to 14 results, okay? So um, this is, and she, it's published in the Journal of Appalachian Studies. So if you want to put yourself in there, you can do that. Um, you can also create an alert. Like if you're an author, you're on campus, and you want to create a, an alert, or you just want to follow the search of every time something is published about Appalachian social health, or this may be a, a Telsa was something somebody was interested in. In Google Scholar, if you're interested in Telsa, you create an alert, and then every time that something comes up, it's going to come. I could, you know, I'll put in my Gmail account, and it would go to me. So that can be like to keep up on new things being published in Google Scholar. That's creating an alert, and also. If you have, my name isn't handy for this. My name is Megan Johnson. So if I create a, uh, an alert for things published by me as an author, I get a lot, I seem very prolific because a lot of things come up for me. But um, of course, it's other people who stole my name. Um, so I'm back to Google Scholar and I'm going to look for uh, social health one more time. And just talk about a few more little things in Google's oh, social healthy. That's not a very good search. Take social health. Um, I'm going to it, it do my, um, you can do case law. I'm going to do my date range. I find that to be one of the more handy things under citations. Um, 
you can add, oh, I'm sorry, that's, that, that is not what I meant to do. Uh, you can see how many people cited it here. That can be, um, that's including citations right there. Related articles, and then the cite feature is going to be super handy. In your settings, you can set up that you want, here on campus, we have ex, um, access to EndNote. If you use a citation management software, EndNote's super handy. So, and then you can remember that, oh, I use EndNote. And right there, it's going to open up um, something that I can import into the my software of um, my EndNote software, which I won't go through now, but we do offer workshops on how to use EndNote. So I know that was just a dash through. John Wiswell from time to time will offer uh, Google, you know, Google Scholar specific workshops. We have some archived. Um, I'm past 45 minutes, so um, there will you will get a um, please rate this. Uh, webinar and just be honest. We love feedback. And I want to thank you all for attending. If you have individual questions, I am not that hard to find. Please feel free to contact me. And um, I'd love to talk to you more about efficient use of Google and Google Scholar. Thank you very much for uh, attending.